All right. Well, I think we're ready to get started uh, for the deep dive this morning. It's Monday, April 1st. Uh, we've had a great Easter weekend. Uh, back at it here on Monday morning. Uh, excited to be uh, here on the deep dive talking about uh, one of the most important topics. We're going to talk about mortgage rates, uh, where are they at right now and where are they heading uh, throughout the year. So welcome to everybody joining. You know, as always, um, I, I want to tell you, put it there where you're watching from. It's so great to see people from all over the country uh, in, in the comments where they're watching from as they join the deep dive, starting off their week uh, this way, talking about, you know, really the what I would say the most important topics in, in real estate. We talked about uh, inventory last week. We're talking about mortgage rates this week. We're going to talk about affordability next week because mortgage rates certainly have a direct impact on that, uh, on, on affordability. So, you know, I saw a quote is on uh, um, our Facebook page. I was just looking at it as I was getting ready for this. Um, that was from Steve Harney. It said, the character you show over the next 60 to 90 days will play a huge part in the reputation you enjoy over the next 10 years. I believe that to be true right now where we're at in the business. You know, our job of being the educator is what we need to do, is what we need to uh, be out and about talking about what's happening in our business, certainly with everything that we've talked about and everything that's going on within our settlement. We know we need to be um, the educator in our business, but, um, but getting out there and doing that is what our job is right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. We will get started. I'm going to give you everything that we have right now on mortgage rates. I'm going to tell you what I think the second half of the year is going to bring. Um, but but the topic this morning for the deep dive uh, is uh, mortgage rates. Where are they heading? Where are we at right now? And where do we see things heading for the remainder of the year? You know, we do the deep dive every Monday morning for the purpose. And, and really what we do at Keeping Current Matters is for this, uh, you know, understanding. Most agents know what's happening out in the market. Certainly that is true. Good agents understand what's happening, but the great agents can explain what's happening. You know, and, and, I, and I mentioned it as we got started here, um, uh, you, you know, no doubt there is a lot to explain right now. And our job is to be the educator. You know, I, I think I heard this quote the other day, everything's changed, but nothing's changed. Everything's changed in our business. A lot, of, a lot of things coming down, and, and we'll see how that plays out within our settlement and what that means and all the things that we need to do. But then nothing changes with our need to be the educator, our need to be uh, the thought leader, the knowledge broker in our market relative to what's happening. So let's hop into this topic on mortgage rates. We will uh, we'll cover it. I'll give you everything that we have right now, and I'll tell you what I believe uh, is ahead for the remainder of the year. But uh, Freddie Mac released this statement as of Thursday. Mortgage rates move slightly lower this week, providing a bit more room in the budgets of some prospective home buyers. Additionally, encouraging data out of existing home sales, uh, out on existing home sales reflects improving inventory. We talked about that last week. I think Linda, you asked that, um, but uh, but you can go back and watch last week's deep dive if you're a KCM member or see it on Facebook. They go on to say, regardless, rates remain elevated near seven percent as markets watch for signs of cooling inflation, hoping that rates will come down further. So here, here's a look at the the drop. I'm not so sure how much of a drop that is. Um, as of Thursday, the average 30-year fixed in this country is 6.79. I looked at Mortgage News Daily this morning, 6.91, I believe, at the point that I saw it. So, you know, certainly uh, elevated uh, close to, uh, to to 7% there. You know, I think this, this market right now is all about what is going to happen uh, economically in this country, certainly led uh, by the Fed. I do want to talk about that. They met a couple of weeks ago. I think it's important that we understand that, not that we have to become you know, experts on what the Fed is doing, but we need to understand what, what is happening right now. NerdWallet said this. They said the Federal Reserve influences mortgage rates, but doesn't set them. Hopefully, everybody on the call knows that. As of March 20th, as of the March 20th meeting, the central bank kept the federal funds rate unchanged and said it will keep an eye on economic developments to decide what, is ne what its next rate move will be. Mortgage rates are influenced by many elements, including the inflation rate, the pace of job creation, whether the economy is growing or shrinking, and the Federal Reserve's monetary policy is a factor, too, and that's set by the Federal Open Market Committee. So the, the latest Fed decision was to hold tight, you know, to, to maintain the target range. 
uh, the Fed funds rate between five and a quarter, five and a half, all of that, you know, obviously on the on the Fed side. But what we're looking for is the Fed to say, OK, we, we, we started raising interest rates almost uh, you know, whatever it's been two years ago. Now they've paused. We want to see them start to cut rates. And, you know, I, I think that's what we're looking for. That will be the indication that they feel like, OK, we, we want to start start to head the other way in what we're doing economically. It'll bode well for mortgage rates, certainly, uh, as we go throughout the year. Now, what you want to start to do is say, OK, wh when do we think they're going to uh, start to cut rates? Because that'll give us an indication of what's to come. And Forbes said this, they said the current expectations are that the Fed will start to cut rates at some point between June and September, sort of summer to you know early fall there. The exact timing depends on how incoming economic data looks. The Fed's March meeting did not set up the prospect of a near-term interest rate cut, but a summer cut appears likely. Now, we're gonna hang on and see if that remains true uh, relative to what the Fed is saying. But most indications, most market watchers would say sometime June thereafter, uh, we'll see the first Fed cut. You know, the Fed cut said, hey, in the second half of the year, we'll see uh, cuts. And so we certainly uh, expect that. And that will then lead to a better mortgage rate environment. And, and I'll give you in, in just a minute here, I'm going to give you the latest projections, but a couple of other quotes to sort of give you perspective on what uh, what the, the Fed is saying right now. While we expect inflation to eventually moderate in the short run, a growing economy will keep inflation above the 2% target level. Therefore, we expect the Federal Reserve to not cut rates until the summer at the earliest and potential upside surprising on inflation could push, push rate cuts out even further. So what, what they're saying is all about inflation. It's all about the 2% target level. And what this will not be is a straight line, right? It, it might be bumpy. They say uh, there that, um, you know, uh, potential upside surprises on inflation uh, could come. So certainly a volatile market, certainly a market that we want to stay on top of. We're going to do the best job we can to keep you um, educated on this topic, because I think it's something that, you know, as we see um, uh, some improvements in mortgage rates, we're going to see more people come into, uh, into the market. Freddie Mac said, as a result, the treasury yield will remain elevated in the near term, keeping mortgage rates elevated. We forecasted mortgage rates to stay above 6.5% through this quarter and next. So 6.5% through the first half of the year. And I'll give you the projections here in just a minute that support that. But they talk about the Treasury yield. You know, if you've followed Keeping Current Matters for any time, you remember the graph where we show the relationship between the 10-year Treasury and the 30-year fixed mortgage rate and how they move in this sort of symbiotic relationship. Now, if you're a KCM member, you can go grab that slide at any time. It's updated uh, and, and, and really understand that. Maybe even show people this is what's happening relative to treasury yields. And I've got my eye on it, so to speak. I have a great lender partner uh, that can support you in that as well, certainly is, is important. But what are the projections for uh, for this year going throughout uh, you know the remainder of uh, the, the, the time that's left? We're here. The first, uh, the first day of April, first quarter is behind us. And so you see the consensus right now of, uh, of projections for Q1. So we said six, seven, nine, right almost near that in the, in the projections from Fannie and MBA and NAR. And then you start to see this sort of stair uh, step down. You know, there's the old saying, when rates go up, they take the escalator, but when they come down, they take the stairs. And we're certainly seeing that come down slowly. But what all three of these forecasters have in common is they see the interest rate market improving as we go throughout the year. Now, I, I, want, I want to talk about something specifically here, fourth quarter. Now, we started off this year talking about the year of the fives, and will we be uh, in, in you know, kind of 5.99 or, or cross over that five threshold before the end of the year? It makes it harder right now uh, with, uh, you know, the Fed's inaction on cutting rates um, to get there. But no doubt it could turn into a horse race to say, do we make it there by the end of the year? And I think all of that is going to bode very well for more people coming into the market. And I'll show you that in just a minute. There's no doubt that we are in a 
demand-based rate environment right now. And that's going to lead to really what I believe is going to happen. And I'm going to, if you'll hang on uh, till the end here, I'm going to tell you three things that I think are uh, for sure about the remainder of this year relative to mortgage rates. Um, but let's keep on this with, uh, with uh, Lisa Sturdivant from Bright MLS. During the early part of the year, expect some bumpiness in rates as new ac economic data are released and more buyers get back into the market. However, the overall outlook for mortgage rates in 2024 20, uh, suggests more rate drops with Bright MLS forecasting, forecast predicting rates uh, to hit 6.2 by the fourth quarter. So Bright MLS, the ones that we just saw, Freddie, uh, NBA, NAR, all say, hey, we're going to get down to the low sixes by the end of the year. Uh, an improving market as we go throughout the next several quarters. And we certainly want to see that. That's going to be led by what is, uh, what's the Fed doing? What action are they taking there? What's happening economically uh, in this country? Uh, what's, you know, what, what's sort of the temperature gauge? You know, we talked a, a couple of weeks back on, um, on the deep dive just about the, the, and I think it was the deep dive, maybe it was last month's monthly market report, but, but what the Fed is worried about. The Fed is worried right now about cutting the Fed funds rate and seeing inflation spike back up again. That's the challenge they have. They don't, they don't want to sort of cut too quickly, uh, but they don't want to hang on too long either. So it's sort of this threading the needle relative to what they do. But, but the outlook, no doubt, if you, if you start to look at it and kind of take a step back, is that rates will trend lower. And this is a great look and, and maybe even a, you know, something that I would print off and have as I talk to people about where rates have been. You go all the way back to 2018, 2019, you see the dip down just visually 2020 and 2021. And people know that, right? Everybody refinanced right there. Everybody decided they were going to buy a home. And then we saw the quickest rise in the 30 year fixed mortgage rate in 2022 sort of peaked there and, and uh, you know, see this trend coming down into this year and next year. It bodes very, very well um, for people that are looking to buy. You know, I, I think, too, this is going to, to come into opportunity in the market right now. As we see rates come lower, more and more people will jump into the market. That is a fact. Uh, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. And, and you know, probably the ones that um, will be, you know, feel that headwind the strongest are first time home buyers. And uh, Lisa Sturdivant said that. She said first time buyers will unfortunately have more buyers who they have to compete with as mortgage rates remain elevated. The good news is there should be more inventory coming to the market this spring. Again, we talked about inventory last week on the deep dive. Um, we certainly can validate that more inventory is in the market right now than this time last year. And by and large, there's not a market. Um, right now that says we have plenty of inventory for the number of buyers that want to buy. Uh, so we want to see more uh, you know, inventory coming back in, more, more people saying, you know what, we are going to, uh, to make a move and we're going to list our home. But I want to maybe take the next few minutes and talk about where we sit right now, where opportunity is and, and, and how that frames up. And this next graphic is probably one of the best that shows where we sit uh, in a demand-based rate environment. If you've seen this graphic before, uh, we've used it um, really to show wh where's the level between you know, good, limited, and weak demand, and it's about 6.5%. And, and we stand right now, you know, I mentioned uh, earlier 6.79% the average 30-year fixed. And certainly, uh, depending on who you're working with, they can talk about uh, what, what rates are, are like. But as we look at that, it's sort of this, this dividing line, 7% the dividing line between limited and weak demand. But as we see that that start to come down, we, we cross over six and a half percent. And I'll show you some things in just a few minutes that really support this, some surveys. We get into good demand and strong demand. And I think it bodes well for the remainder of this year. Matter of fact, one of the things that I believe will come of this is we could see a stronger second half of the year than we've seen uh, so far in the first half of the year. Now, certainly expect a, a spring market to be uh, to be good this year, um, but we could see a stronger second half of the year as we get into a more um, favorable rate environment. And I think thinking about the reality that we're in a demand-based rate environment doesn't mean there's 
not opportunity. It means that I'm aware of that. It means that I'm going to be working to be the educator as we get to where we want to, to be, where we see more demand coming out in the market. You know, Lawrence Yoon said this housing demand has been on a steady rise due to population and job growth, though the actual timing of purchases will be determined by prevailing mortgage rates and wider inventory choices. Here's what we know. We know that people have put off buying a home over the last couple of years because of mortgage rates. And certainly people say, well, it's not because of mortgage rates, it's because of affordability and you're right. But no doubt as those start to come in and, 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 and people say, you know, we're gonna do it. Uh, we've talked to, and we're, we're starting to do a lot of research um, here at KCM on builders and what they're building and certainly building you know, smaller square footage of homes that are more affordable for people. As you start to see all of those things come together, we see more demand coming, more transactions coming uh, into the market. So I want to give I want to give you a couple of things as we wrap up this deep dive, a few more slides that show just where is opportunity uh, right now, given all this. And I'll get into those those three things, that I believe, about uh, the coming year here in mortgage rates. But first, um, uh, first piece right here. Despite all of this and despite some of the headwinds that affordability and mortgage rates bring to us, and certainly prices play into that, the appetite to own a home remains strong. Be encouraged by that. Uh, this, this Monday morning, this first uh, day of April, uh, respondents in, in the, the service link survey that we're looking at here, 47% people, people said they, they want to buy a home. They're planning on purchasing a home. And that steers and, you know, sort of leans a, a lot to younger generations. You see Gen Z, 63% say, I want to purchase a home in 2024. Millennials, 59%. Gen X, 45%. Baby boomers, only 21%. So the younger demographic says, we're definitely, you know, we want to buy. We definitely know that building wealth is through, you know, in this country through home ownership. Baby boomers are like, we're good. We, we like where we're at. We've got a great interest rate. But no doubt, younger generations are looking at, um, at buying. You know what they also have? This is very, very interesting. They have a tolerance for higher mortgage rates. Millennials and Gen Z are more comfortable taking on a higher interest rate and in, in what they would consider high. If you look at this, Gen Z says 6.3%. Millennials say 6.2%. Well, if you start to go back and look at what we saw in in the forecast, you know, sometime in in the fall, I think we'll be at that point where we'll get to a place where younger generations go. You know what? We're going to get in. A lot of people will say that. A lot of people that pause their search over the last you know year, uh, two years, will say, you know what? We're going to jump in uh, based on this. So no doubt we see uh, that tolerance for a higher rate uh, rising right now. And you go go through this this again the same study, baby boomers to Gen Z the current rate that they have anywhere from four point six and baby boomers to five point four and Gen Z, and then when would they consider buying a home? Gen Z six point three percent, millennials six point two, Gen X five point eight, baby boomers five. I could have to be five before I would consider anything. So there's opportunity out there. There's a willingness to buy. There's And there's also a rising tolerance for a little bit higher mortgage rate than even what we saw a couple of years ago, which is really psychologically people saying, okay, I get where we're at. I get that we're not going to be back in a you know two and three quarter or 3% 30 year fixed mortgage rate, uh, maybe ever in our lifetime. Uh, and, and I'm okay with buying it at this point. I'll wrap up here with uh, Doug Duncan. He says this, the housing market is likely to continue to face uh, the dual affordability constraints of higher home prices and elevated interest rates in 2024. Hotter than expected inflation data and strong payroll numbers are likely to apply more upward pressure to mortgage rates this year than we previously forecasted. As markets continue to evolve, their expectations of future monetary policy still, while we don't expect a dramatic surge in the supply of homes for sale, we do anticipate an increase uh, in the level of market transactions relative to 2023, even if mortgage rates remain elevated. So I, I think that sums it up well. We're going to talk about affordability next week on uh, the deep dive, but I want to wrap up and I want to say a few things. All of this information sort of points in, in a couple of different directions. First, 
we're in a downward trending mortgage rate environment, right? As we go throughout the year, we'll see lower mortgage rates. First fact. Second fact, we will see as we go through that, more people get into the market. More people say, hey, I want to buy a home. And that certainly will lend itself or trend to more younger generations. Third, what does that mean? It means right now there is an opportunity to buy that I believe we should talk with people that are looking right now to say, hey, there is an opportunity where you know a lot of people maybe haven't jumped back in that they will in the second half of this year or in the fall of this year, that you can have an intelligent conversation about the cost of waiting, all of those things where it makes sense to get in right now. So that's everything I have on mortgage rates. My goal always, and our goal at Keeping Current Matters is to give you everything you need to be the knowledge broker to the clients you serve. So you can say, hey, I'm the best educated agent. I'm the best educated professional on what exactly is happening on mortgage rates right now. Certainly take that, have your relevant market opinion uh, based upon the facts that we see with mortgage rates. Make it a great week and, uh, and we'll see you back uh, next Monday.